Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today we are going to be picking up where we left off in the last video, where we had just finished grinding the head of this hammer. I've got it all finished up now, and we are going to mount this on a 16 inch ball peen hammer handle. Now, I chose a ball peen hammer handle versus just a regular hammer handle because it has a little thinner grip to it, and I want a little more whippy action. So what I was indicating there with my thumb is to take and showcase how far that wedge is going to have to go down and how we're not going to be using all of this hammer handle, obviously. So we will have to take and cut it off. Now I've already pre-prepped this wedge and made sure that it is good and clean and ready to go. And then we'll decide whether we're gonna use the metal wedge or not, but it's optional. The wood wedge should hold just fine. So now that we got all of our pieces assembled, we need to drive the hammer head itself up onto the wooden hammer handle. Now, since I've already polished these hammer faces, I'm gonna set it on two pieces of copper, straddling the hardy hold of the anvil, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tap the handle straight on down into the hammer head itself. You wanna make sure you start this in nice and square, so this way when it does go in there, you know, you don't have any crooked handle here that you're going to have to dress up at a later date. Now, this is a factory made. This is just a factory made handle that I bought at a local hardware store. And so, therefore, you know, it's not, uh, you know, they're not the greatest hammer handles, but they work. They work. Obviously, if you're really good at woodworking, you can create your own out of some really special wood. But since I'm not a really good woodworker at all, I'll just do what I've got to do. So now we're going to go ahead and trim off the excess. We went ahead and trimmed this off at approximately about a half inch or 12.5 mil above the hammer head itself. I like to have a little extra stick out of the top of my hammer heads. This allows for you to get a little bit tighter of a wedging fit whenever you put that wedge into the piece. Now one thing I didn't showcase here is I have a, a wedge and I kind of put a little bit of a melted wax coating on the very front edge of it just to help this wedge drive down and glide in. I have found that if you don't lubricate the wedges to a little bit of a degree the, at least the factory made ones, they have this tendency to just want to split on you versus drive down through. I think they get kiln dried and they just get so crispy that it's about impossible for them not to split. But that's just what I found with my local um, wedges. And so it might be different in your location depending on humidity and climate, things like that. But there we go. So now we got to take and trim off this wedge. And then I think we will put in the little steel wedge. I'll show you that here in a second, and then we'll trim it down as well. So here I'm just following the contour of the hammer head handle already that has already been established. And then I'll go ahead and true this on up on the belt sander and come back to the anvil. So we're gonna go ahead and drive in this little metal wedge, this little steel wedge, and you know, you want to take your time with this. Uh, you know, the faster you try to hammer on this, you take a chance of actually splitting the hammer handle itself. So you want to just take your time. Trust me on this one. I've split a few hammer handles just straight up the, just straight up the hammer handle and, you know, lost it. And, uh, you know, nothing's more frustrating than that especially once you've paid for these. I get these for right around six, seven bucks. And some of these will get, that can get pretty pricey if you know you have to do it on a regular basis. But there, you can see the fitment there, how that's working. So it's a pretty clean little hammer. I'm enjoying it. So, we're just going to go ahead and go to the ceramic belt. This is a 120 grit belt on my belt grinder. I'm going to go ahead and get this all trued up, cleaned up, as clean as I can get it, or at least where it gets flush with the wood. 
and it's okay if it chars up a little bit because we're going to char the hammer handle later anyhow. So main thing, we just want to go ahead and get that cleaned down to where there won't be any snag points. And so far this is looking pretty good. So this next step here is completely optional whenever you make hammer handles. Um, I choose to do this with my hammer handles just because I find that it gives it a little bit of a uniqueness to it. I've heard some people say that the Japanese would do this to take and seal wood fibers off and so therefore preserve the wood. I don't know how much accuracy there is in that. Once again, I'm not a woodworker, so maybe somebody who does wood, they can comment in the comment section down below if they know the history on that. But I mainly just do it because I think it's just a nice aging effect to the wood and I don't have to wait for it to get all grubby and oily and dirty naturally with my hands. So, so on this, I'll just take and go ahead and heat this all up and put it all around. Now, one of the other things you'll notice about this little video series, and it's like I said at the beginning of this video series, is that I was not going to take the time to heat treat the hammerhead itself. And I'm still not going to. Uh, you know, I'm going to finish this handle off with a little bit of coconut oil. And this hammer is tougher than what mild steel would be. And it's, you know, it's a little tougher than maybe even a 10 series steel of some sort. And so therefore, all I'm working with it is copper. And I'm working soft, polished copper when I'm going to be using this hammer specifically. And so I won't be using this hammer to hit anything like hot steel, cut off tools, cold steel, high carbon steels of any sort, anything of that nature. This hammer is always gonna be meant to take and handle softer material. This is a great point to point out that you do not always need a glass hard hammer and then temper it. So. You know, selection of steel can be based upon your need. Not always do you have to go with 5160 or 4140 or anything of that like. You can really get away with um, a lot of different options, depending on what you're working on. So, here we're going to just do a little test run on it. Now, this is what I have intended this hammer for completely and entirely, is to create a texture and to plainish out material. Now, in order for it to do that, it needs a perfectly smooth surface or as smooth as you can get it. And eventually I will polish these faces as well. I just happen to run out of time in this current video. But it's always gonna be used to hammer on clean copper. Now, if I miss a hammer blow and I strike something that's harder than the hammer itself, like the face of my anvil. It will leave a dent or an impression on the hammer and then I will have to take the time to clean it up and polish it out. But as you can see with copper, there's no deformation. And so this is really all that was needed. Now I'm gonna tell you this on the forging side of things when you're working with stainless steel, I do not believe stainless steel should have ever been worked by hand. I had a terrible time forging this stainless steel hammer uh, by hand without any assistance of a striker and it you know it just really resists impact very 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 well so it does not like to move it's quite shocking but you know it does make a decent hammer you want your hammer to be tough you don't want it to be hard and brittle you want a tough hammer and if you have to redress it every now and then from time to time when you have a miss hammer blow or something like that, it really isn't no big deal. So here you can see the texture off my anvil, which this anvil surface is fairly clean, but it still has its, it still has its problems. So I'm adjusting the camera here, trying to lighten it up so you guys can see what's going on. And you can see that there's still kind of a rougher texture on the back side here. And when I flip it over, you'll see the front side and you'll see the difference. So that's the back side. And then do you see the glint and the shininess there? That's what we want to preserve with a nice clean hammer blow. So there's the two pins working in conjunction, the hammer face itself to the right and then the pin to the left. 
But anyways, that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video and this video series. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And like I always say, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.